Welcome, everybody. Um, my name is Ian Haywood. I'm a, a lecturer professor in Scotland at the University of Aberdeen. And today, I'm really going to want to talk to you about the idea of disruptive thinking, uh, an interesting concept which is driving radical innovation and new business models uh, all around the world. And it's a very important dimension to entrepreneurship. Um, but to do that, what I really want to do is focus in on a couple of things to help us understand it. And I always feel it's best to start and explain it in the context of an example. And the example I'm going to choose for you today is very much to focus on the music industry. So I'm going to very much focus on talking to you about what's been happening in the music industry. And then we're going to move out from that space and start to look at, well, is it happening anywhere else? Are there other examples where we can see disruption taking place? And if we get time, maybe a little later on or in another lesson, we'll take a look at uh, tools for how you can disrupt your own business. So let's have a bit of a, a music lesson to, to start with. Let's think about how disruption has gone on in the industry. And let's take a look at why we've got situations today where we have companies that are disappearing or going bankrupt and other companies that are emerging. And what I want to do is understand that because companies who may be familiar to you like uh, HMV Records uh, have filed initially for things like bankruptcy. And other companies like Spotify have managed to take over the industry. Why is that? Why was a company like HMV not able to survive in the way it had? And why could a new company come from nowhere very quickly in order to do those things? Now, the interesting thing that we have to understand here is that the music industry itself has had a very stable business model up until recently for a large number of years, about 100 years. And the slides in, uh, that you can see give you examples of that business model. For example, traditional records, phonogram, etc. And that had been around for a long, long while. And that's what's recently been disrupted uh, through this concept of disruptive innovation and disruptive thinking. But interestingly, that concept that I've just talked to you about, the idea of recorded music on records or CD, that in itself was a very disruptive business model in its own way. Traditionally, musicians made their money by live performances. And that was the way music was performed. If you had a party and you wanted music, you couldn't just put on a CD or listen to a record. You had to hire musicians. And so when the original technology came around over 100 years ago, like the phonogram, musicians were not happy. They were very unhappy because they no longer could uh, control who could listen to their music. And they thought that recording their music would mean they were out of a job. And so the technology of recording music, even in these early days, was a disruptive model. And musicians themselves fought against it for a long while. They didn't want to record their music. And that's why business models we have to think about go around in cycles. And so traditionally, the industry had been disrupted over 100 years ago. When this happens, it's called a disruptive hypothesis. And perhaps the second disruptive hypothesis that we need to focus in on is the one that happened in the 1970s. And this is where, this is where a new technology emerges, perhaps initially for another reason, and then gets used in, the, the, in an industry. So in the world of music, the second disruptive hypothesis that occurred was that the audio cassette was made available, not initially, which is interesting, for recording music, was initially for recording in the workplace to capture written words and to then put those very much uh, onto audio tape for typists to use. But the music industry and people in the music sector seized on this because now they could have another format for recording. And one of the benefits of that was people could record what they wanted. They didn't have to have all the complicated equipment to make records and things like that. The problem, of course, when you start recording music using audio tape, and anyone can do it, you at home could do it, was the concept of piracy was born in the music industry. That is, I could record music, share it with my friends, but I didn't have to pay for it. And this created a disruptive tension in the industry because the industry liked music and liked the ability to be able to have the freedom to record it, 
uh, in, a, in a more flexible way, but they didn't like the fact that it could be shared without any payment. It gets even more interesting when we move forward in time a little more and add a third disruptive hypothesis. Because this third disruptive hypothesis takes the idea of sharing music freely, but brings in the internet. And many of you may remember or be familiar with this little character in the middle here. And that's one of the early logos of the Napster file sharing company. Now what happens is people can exchange music radically. They can share it, they can put it online. You don't need to record it on an audio cassette, share it with your friend when you see them. You can share it with anyone, anywhere, who has access over the internet. And this is a really exciting uh, proposition for the industry, but at the same time is scary, because now they can't control the distribution of music. But something else happened at this point in history that's very important, and that is CD technology was becoming uh, available, widely available, but its production costs were cheap relative to the old forms, yet the industry was pricing music higher. So now we have people in the, in the world who want to share music, but they don't want to pay expensive amounts of money for it. And so Napster is a way they can share music for less, but it's free. But the industry is threatened by it. So what we get here is a really interesting situation because the industry does not like all this disruptive technology. In fact, it wants to do all sorts of things. And the most important things the industry wants to do is to try to shut it down, close it down. So they try to close down uh, the operations like Napster. And the interesting thing here is the musicians join in as well, because they can no longer see how they're going to make money when people can freely share music. And so we get a situation where a new idea and new technologies are available and being used by the customers, but the people who produce the services for the customers don't like this, and they try to close it down. And so what we see is a real set of tensions here. And what we note is that disruption very often occurs when you've got a dissatisfaction or a desire to change something. So music was becoming expensive, and it needed to be reduced in price. You also get a situation where there are other people seeing an industry not using these new technologies. So people were looking at Napster and seeing nobody using this. They were looking at file sharing and seeing nobody using it. And they start to think about how they can actually make money with that approach. And you get a change in consumer behavior that drives this as well. Customers no longer want to buy CDs in the way that they have. They want to be able to freely share music. And then the real interesting thing is that the incumbent organization, the person in charge of the sector or the leading players, realize that actually they don't want this business model, they don't want to change anything because their current business model is working for them because we pay them through copyright and we pay them through licensing. And they don't feel they can change and they don't like to see what their customers are doing. So what happens is very interesting they go into a protection mode, as the music industry did. They try to stop people copying music. They try to stop people file sharing. They try to regulate against this disruptive behavior of their consumers. They try to stop them uh, doing what they want to do, which is share the music. And they stay and only play attention to their close competitors so they don't see what is going on. And they're locked into this belief that they know what's best for their customers. When we get this scenario emerging, as we did in the music industry, that is the point at which we know there's real disruption about to happen. And why it becomes more more challenging uh, for many of these uh, situations is there's probably somebody else sitting out there seeing the industry not taking advantage. And in this case, the key company watching what was going on and seeing the opportunity and seeing the lack of action was Apple. And Apple realized that money could be made here by responding to this. Before we look at why and how Apple responded, let's think about those characteristics again of someone who might become disrupted. It's usually a dominant player, someone who's well established in the industry. They usually have large market share and they're doing very, very well. And in many cases, they could at that point in time, before they're disrupted, have good cash reserves. And they're probably well established with lots of suppliers all connected together and supporting them. 
And most important of all is this last point on my slide here about the belief that the customer is locked in to the system. This is key. They believe they now know more about how the customers would like to use their products and services than the customer. So, if you think about that in the music industry, that's perhaps why household names are changing in the industry. Companies like EMI and HMV are no longer managing to command the space and command the industry. The new players have come in and shaped the world. They've come in and changed how things are done. And that's perhaps why companies like Apple, that wanted to embrace the idea of Napster and found a way to monetize it, and why Spotify, a small startup, which also found a way to do file sharing, came in, and perhaps why musicians are now using the technology to take ownership of the space and sell their music direct to customers, are starting to be the new dominant business models. But don't just think it's the music industry where this is happening. If you look around you, and I would encourage you all to go outside, wander around in your own areas of interest, in your own regions, and look at companies and areas of business that are being threatened by changes in technology. And ask yourself, what are the disruptive hypotheses that are driving, hypotheses that are driving these? For example, we've talked about how digital music is being challenged by Apple, for example. But think about the internet and how advertising agencies have been challenged by Google, who has found a new way to deal with and address the advertising scenario in a different way, and ad companies that are finding it difficult to survive in the traditional way of selling advertising. And if you're into reading, think about publishers and how publishers are now struggling to sell and commission books in the same way as we find that new players like Apple and Amazon are coming in to allow individuals to write books and sell them directly to their readers without the need for a publisher. And finally, we have Kodak there, who kind of were involved in the early stages of digital photography, but didn't take it forward because their business model was based on taking film from you back to the headquarters and paying to have it turned into your pictures. So what company like Kodak would desire to follow a disruptive business model that's going to kill its existing business. And that's why we see companies like Flickr and YouTube who've been able to build business models on the back of no cost for producing digital pictures. So what I'd encourage you to do now after this uh, session is go out, look around you, think about your passions and your interests, and think about what disruption is going to go on in the areas that you're interested in? And how could you turn that into a commercial opportunity uh, for yourself or for your colleagues or for any business that you want to create? So go out and think disruptive. Thank you for listening.